So good morning, welcome for practice. Today I want to explore how we can sense the boundaries between ourselves and the so-called outside world and how we understand when our boundaries need to be shored up. It's one thing we say in Hunger, Hope and Healing. We often have to reconstruct or make for the first time our boundaries and then we have to keep shoring them up if they are likely to be intruded upon by people or forces that we don't want them to be intruded by. Sometimes the breach of our boundaries is actually just an internal mechanism, which we can talk further about in our discussion format in Hunger, Hope and Healing. But that internal mechanism gets updated through the practices of yoga. And then our courage to set these boundaries, to make a clear and sovereign space that is ours, our courage for that is coming from what we can cultivate during yoga practice too. So please take a comfortable seat. You can drop your hands to your lap. You're welcome to close your eyes. And begin relaxing your mind and your body into the present moment. Now one boundary we might imagine is that the present moment does not right now include the past nor the future. Of course, our bodies remember the past and so do we, but in terms of the mind becoming present to the here and now, it's free from the past and it's yet to experience the future. As you breathe in, you might imagine that you're drawing your attention in to yourself and into the present moment. As you breathe out, imagine releasing to your left and your right past and future. And the important thing is that we get revived in the present moment. It's not that we're making a plan to avoid the future or to deny the past. We're just reviving ourselves right here in the present. And try that one more time. During the inhale, you're gathering yourself into your center. Bring your energy back home to you. And on the exhale, imagine to the left and the right, past and future, they fade for now. Another boundary that we can imagine here in the present is between the experiences of craving or aversion. So also not allowing craving, grasping, compulsion, distracting thoughts to intrude on you right now. And as well, not allowing aversive, resistant, or let's say pessimistic thoughts to intrude either. So when you inhale, you're gathering yourself to your center. On the exhale, picture to the left and the right, past and future fall away, and in front of you, behind you, craving and aversion also fall away. And you can be like a lotus coming up through the mud to bloom, unhindered by those things. Now sometimes to help this process along, it's really, a good tool to think of how can I inhale to bring myself back to center and how can I exhale to set these things aside so what we're going to do right now is a long smooth inhale through the nose during the exhale you'll make a teeny tiny straw of the lips and we'll exhale really slowly out through the mouth that's going to require us to have a more slow thoughtful exhalation it's going to shift you to a parasympathetic nervous system it requires the tone of the lower belly at the end of that exhale, 
I'm going to ask you to totally relax and imagine that your body receives the next breath the way that a breeze comes in through an open window. Okay, so long, slow inhale. Making a tiny straw shape of the lips, exhale slowly. And then totally relax. The next inhale comes like a breeze through an open window. Okay, so let's do that three times and you're going to imagine during the exhale, it's like the craving in front of you falls away. To the right, the future drops away for right now. To the left, the past drops away for right now. and. Behind you, all resistance and self-hatred and aversion also drops away. And on the inhale, imagine that this lotus is coming up. You're reviving your sense of self. So we'll do it three times. Each of us will have to be at our own pace because I cannot conduct the pace of your breath, nor can you do that for me. So in your timing, inhale slowly. And exhale through the tiny straw. And you deeply relax to receive the inhale like a breeze. And when you've completed that three times, which you may already have done, for me it's a little bit slower process, but when you've completed that three times, then relax and let the breeze come in through the window. The inhale comes to, to you. Let's imagine together, we'll visualize as if we're doing the four directions, but these are going to be the, the four kind of um, challenges. In yoga, they're called malas, and there's a specific translation for that, which I won't get into right now. Uh, it's not the same as mala beads. It's a different word. Kind of like the word wind and the word wind are different words <laughs> in, our, in our English language. So to our left is, excuse me, to our right, let me call this my right, is past. To the left is future. Behind you is aversion, in front of you is craving. Cross your left hand over your right knee. Walk your right hand behind you. And please twist to your right. You can turn your head to your right also. And as you're twisting, I'm going to ask you to try this again. A long, slow inhale through the nose. And one long exhale out through the mouth like a little tiny cocktail straw.
And you can picture during that exhale that you're sending out to sea, you're sending away all the past moments of aversion like, and self-hatred and criticism. Just sending that off into the distance so it can't intrude on you right now. Let's do two more breath cycles here. Rotate back around to face forward and notice we had passed to the right and aversion to the back of us. And sending that sort of habit of self-hatred, the past habit, let's put that in the past. Send it out to see. Give yourself the space to be right here, right now. Now cross your right hand over your left knee. Walk the left hand behind you. As you're twisting to your left, we have future, and again, aversion is still behind us. So let's picture, even on the exhale here, that you're sending away any future possibility of succumbing again to self-hatred or self-criticism or the ways in which shame has taught you how to speak to yourself about yourself. Let's do three breath cycles. Okay, so breathe in slow. You make that tiny straw for the exhale, let it go slow and steady at your pace, and do that twice more. And then exhale, come around to face forward. And now you can imagine past and future experiences of self-hatred or aversion or resistance, the narrative of shame. It's just fading, it's falling away, moving out beyond this present moment. If you were a boat on the ocean and they were boats, they've gone way off to the distance and they cannot crowd you right now. Notice what happens for craving. Right? Does the experience of desire have a different feel? Like maybe we really deeply desire contentment or safety or assurance or relief from the voice of shame. Right? Okay, so interlace your fingers now. Press the heels of your hands forward. Rise up. As you're pressing up, let's now do inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. So when you're reaching up, reach up from your heart through the thumb side of your arms, up towards your thumbs. On the exhale, picture that you're going to tone the lower belly as if you were squeezing a tube of toothpaste. And then your spine gets taller, the crown of your skull gets taller, and the low belly gets more toned. Now breathe in. When you next exhale, sweep your arms wide out into a T-shape like this. And then rotate your torso to your left. Place your right hand on your left knee and side bend over to your right. Reach your left arm past your left ear. Keeping the left hip grounded, you are kind of squeezing the right side of the low belly. So enjoy that massage. Try to exhale pretty completely. Okay, 
and then inhale, raise back up to center, arms out in a T-shape. Okay, and now other side, bring your left hand across, so rotate your torso, place your left hand over your right knee, side bend to your left, sweep your right arm past your right ear. Root down into your right hip so you're grounded there. And then exhale relatively completely and use the next inhale to rise back up to center. And keep the space beyond you even, all this space that's yours. And exhale, hands to your heart. And picture again, what would it mean actually to have craving for what would you mean most deeply hungry as it were? And might it be something like relief or clarity or kindness or assurance? Okay, reach back to clasp your hands at the small of your back. Roll the shoulders back. Give a good strong squeeze of the upper back. So in that squeeze, widen your collarbones. Do your best to hold your hands behind or hold a strap or Sometimes people will hold on to like a wooden dowel because it's easier than holding a strap even. So make a choice there for yourself or hold the bathrobe sash if that's all you have. As you roll the shoulders back, lift up through your heart and let's inhale to go up, lift your throat, lift your chin. And exhale, bring your chin down towards your throat but keep the chest and heart lifted. Inhale to go back up. Think of lengthening from your pubic bone up through the front hemisphere of your body up to your chin. And exhale, bring only your chin and head down. Keep the chest and heart rising. And do that one more time, please. Notice how your body is responding to these relatively simple and gentle movements. Release the clasp of your hands and rest your hands out over your knees. And as you close your eyes, now picture that that which is moving, like this um, warmth circulation, the release of tension, let's say the release of the past burdens of shame, those are going downstream now. Also picture releasing yourself from any future threat of shame. Even though we know it might happen, right here in the present, we want to cultivate the biochemical, neurological, emotional, mental, spiritual possibility that we can be free. And I do believe it's possible in the journey of hunger, hope, and healing. I see it all the time. So try it on. Imagine it dissolving, fading. Now once more, clasp your hands behind your back, roll your shoulders back, bend the elbows a little bit if they tend to hyperextend, and as you squeeze your arms back, either stand tall or sit tall, and on the inhale, raise up through your heart, open your throat, lift your chin, and exhale, bring your chin down in towards the throat, really towards the upper part of the sternum, and then inhale to go back up. And exhale, chin in towards your throat. And one more time, inhale to go up. And exhale, bring your chin down. And again, we're gonna sit up nice and tall, release the clasp of your hands as they rest in your lap. Picture that dissolving of the, the stickiness, the residue of things like past self-hatred the apprehension of future shame too. Just imagine it washing away. See yourself as a person who will have more freedom from that. Get 
Freedom is not a synonym for carelessness. It's not a synonym for apathy. Freedom is the feeling of aliveness and sovereignty. Okay, now please raise your hands to your heart, taking notice of the feeling inside. Appreciate yourself for being willing to visualize like this. Now we're going to be inhaling and aiming forward. Right, so this is like an arrow, you're aiming forward. And what you might think of as, since we've had craving out here in front, that's where I placed it, like you're, you're piercing the difficulty of craving. You're, you're piercing it like you're in charge rather than the craving being in charge. Right, so the cupcake can't haunt you. It's like you are aiming your arrow, and the arrow is like, no, I have more power than you do. You're the archer. Right? So you're going to aim like this. Then we're going to go up, and the thumbs are crossed, so that's going to make it easier to hold the hands together. And then we're going to side bend to one side, come back up to center, we'll side bend the other way, and then we're going to come back down into the heart like this. Okay, so breathe in. Exhale, press forward. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, side bend right. Inhale, up to center, a long, smooth breath. Exhale, side bend left. Inhale, up to center. And exhale, hands down to the heart, it's like you're bringing yourself back into your sovereign inner place of refuge. Breathe in. Exhale, press forward. Push the craving further away, perhaps. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, side bend to your right. Inhale, up to center. Exhale, side bend to your left. Keep your base steady and strong. Inhale, up to center. And exhale, coming back down into your heart where craving is actually transformed into contentment, assurance, relief. Notice the feeling tone inside. You can picture yourself like the lotus that is blooming in the center. Past and future have faded. They've gone way out to sea. Aversion has drifted into the background far away. And craving has been diminished, <laughs> made puny, way out in front. It's not pulling on you right now. And then thank yourself for participating in the practice. You may bow your head to your heart. So this kind of practice includes the breath and the body, but also visualization and intention. And those are things that are really important to cultivate because often, without any supervision, what we're imagining or visualizing is more like dread or um, downward spirals. We're visualizing the unfortunate thing happening. It's a little bit what we call the negativity bias in the human brain. We are biasing to the negative because our survival system promotes that. So we might wake up in the morning and visualize all the things that could go wrong or all the ways in which we're flawed or how far behind we are. That, those are called the negativity bias, those kinds of thoughts that come up like that. So here we're actually using visualization to strengthen, like you get to have the lotus that blooms as you. It gets to be you. And we're 
pressing out and giving space for that to happen because otherwise we are crowded by past impressions, past thoughts, the unresolved past, the painful past. We're crowded by our anxiety about the future, our perseveration about the future, our fears of the future. We've, that biochemistry alone right there increases craving to get out of the biochemistry of stress. It promotes cravings for sugar, for fast sugar, so that your body can get away from the past um, threats, which have not yet been resolved, and prevent the future threats, which have not yet come. So in that craving process, often it's things like sugar and carbs because they're quick and our body can use them to get going. And then if we're trying to run away from the aversion, the, the experience, I would say, of shame and criticism, I'm trying to get away from that, of course. At a subtle level, that still happens in our human species, even when we're in recovery. But what happens when we're not in recovery is that that shame and aversion, it feels like it's chasing you. Like you're never going to get you know, away from it unless you prove yourself in some way to be worthy of something that can't be defined, as you've probably experienced. The never-ending cycle of unworthiness has not been solved by another diet or another food plan or another exercise plan. So here we're visualizing that that also fades. And imagining that as a possibility is creating neural synapses and neural wiring in your brain that makes it more likely. So repeat the practice as often as you can. You can come back to it whenever you need to. And once you've done it a number of times, you can just, you're going to take a seat at your office chair or the kitchen table or in the car and you're going to go like this. In that long exhale, in that one long exhale, you can remember the entire visualization here because you'll have a memory of it in your body and you'll feel those things fading and you'll feel yourself rising into the, let's say, the lotus of your capacity. Right. So these are the possibilities here. Okay, let's do a little standing practice. I'm going to back myself up. Okay, in this practice, it's going to be a standing practice. So we start with a base that is stable. The way to make that stable base is to place your feet so they're about one leg length wide. It might feel wide for some of you if you're accustomed to taking like a more narrow stance, but this has you higher from your center of gravity related to the earth, and this has you closer to your center of gravity. So take this stance and give yourself the circumference of space that you get to inhabit right now. Press down through your feet and pretend that you're going to press the floor out to the sides of the room, that you have that kind of strength. And you might feel your muscles getting engaged at the outer thighs, the outer legs, and down into your feet. Okay, now inhale, sweep your arms wide. Imagine that this space is also yours to claim and to occupy. And then exhale, bring your hands down to your heart and fold forward over the tops of your thighs, coming down to Prasarata Padottanasana which means the wide leg forward bend. As you inhale, come up to your fingertips and lengthen your spine forward. As needed, of course, you can put blocks under your hands. And then exhale, bow towards your legs, keeping the leg muscles strong. Imagine again that you're pressing your feet out towards the sides of the room. Inhale, sweep your arms wide, and as you rise up, reach up overhead. And exhale, return into your heart. Now in a practice that I was just teaching, we had to the right is past, to the left is future, behind us is aversion, in front of us is craving. And we're making this space that those things cannot intrude so much on us. And so I'm going to ask you to, to bring into your visualization field to imagine to your right is the past. And often what we're holding from past is the unresolved mucky muck. To the left is future, the future that we sometimes feel anxious about, so we're not even in the present. We're already trying to figure out the future. The past behind us is that experience of aversion, that which we feel like we're trying to get away from, like criticism, uh, and then pressure or feeling burdened again. And then in front of us is craving, the thing we think is going to solve the dilemma, which might be craving for a brownie or craving for um, acknowledgement or craving for something from the outside. Right? So just picturing that, let's make this space ours, and then we're going to reclaim each of those directions to be stronger in ourselves. 
Okay, so again, press into your feet, press out to the sides of the room. Inhale, sweep your arms wide. Make the space around you bigger and more sovereign. And then exhale, hands to your heart and fold forward, touch the floor or a couple of yoga blocks as you bow forward. And then inhale, lift your chest and heart, lengthen forward. And exhale, bow towards your legs. Inhale, rise up to your fingertips, whether your hands are on the floor or on blocks. Okay, now on this one, we're going to inhale, sweep the right arm out to the side, and imagine that you're clearing this space as you twist up to your right. And then exhale, return down to center. Place your right fingertips firmly. Inhale, twist to your left. And as you open, imagine you're clearing the space that is yours to occupy there. And exhale, come back down to center. We're going to do it again. Inhale to your right. Go slow and strong and smooth. Exhale, return to center without any sense of hurrying or rushing. Inhale, go left. Exhale, come down, and again to the right. So you're going to clear out the space as if you're sending, for right now, just sending those past worries, past impressions away. So you get to have this clear inner space for the time being. And then inhale to your left one more time. And exhale, come down to center. Let's place the hands on your blocks or on the floor and curl down towards your legs. Okay, with an inhalation, lift your chest and your heart. And as you come forward, I'm going to ask you on the exhale to blow out through the lips like you're holding a little straw between the lips. And as you're blowing out, picture that you're sending that kind of compulsive, craving, grasping, haunting thing away. With the next exhale, bow towards the legs, blow out through a tiny straw again, and as you're bowing towards your legs, picture that you're, you're sending energy back behind you to also clear up that you're not right now haunted by aversion or criticism or shame. Okay. Inhale, glide your chest and heart forward. Strong exhale out through the lips. Breathe in. And strong exhale out through the lips as you bow towards your legs. And now inhale, sweep your arms wide, rise up to standing. And exhale, place yourself back in your own heart. Let's go heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. Come to mountain pose. And picture yourself having this sovereign like inner lighthouse, this thing that you get to be and no one gets to intrude on it. It's yours to claim. It's yours to name. It's you. Okay, now take a wide stance, and I'm going to ask you to turn your left heel slightly out to the left and turn the right foot directly to your right. So over here is that imaginary past, and the imaginary past of things that 
we have felt we have to keep resolving them or they're like still following us around or somehow we carry around this these forms of unhealthy guilt or shame there is a healthy form of guilt there's also a healthy form of remorse or regret but we tend to carry things from the past we're still trying to solve for it usually unconsciously okay? and then behind us is aversion so that sense like yeah where we once felt so criticized or we're trying to get away from it all this um, ick that we don't want to feel of course because it's toxic and inappropriate and you know it was never yours anyway it just was given to you without your permission without your consent at a time when you were so porous you didn't know it was happening so we're going to reclaim this space here let's place the hands together at the heart inhale sweep your arms wide and then exhale and keeping your legs strong rotate your torso down place your right hand on your right shin or your thigh reach your left arm past your left ear and as you aim in this direction press firmly into your left heel so the whole left side of the body is strong and open keep your right leg stable and your right foot grounded and then picture yourself reaching into this space to clear it out, to give yourself a kind of sovereignty or grace or permission or freedom. And keeping both legs strong and the pelvis stable, when you next exhale, root down into your legs, rise up to standing, and then inhale, stretch your wings wide. And exhale, rotate your right foot in, turn your left foot out. Okay, so over here, the future that we're afraid of because it's going to repeat the past. That's one of the big things is that whatever's unresolved here, we feel like, oh, it's going to keep happening. And so we're trying to prevent that in the future and also fear of the unknown of the future because fear of the unknown is something that our species has anyway. But also if you had some of those upheavals in your development, fear of the unknown is going to be stronger. So we're going to reclaim this space too. Inhale, sweep your arms wide. And then exhale, keep your pelvis stable and strong. Rotate your hips and pelvis to your left, but without sashaying wildly off to the right. So it's a rotation of the pelvis over two strong, stable legs. Place your left hand on your left shin or your thigh or on a chair, whatever is helpful. Reach through your right arm and picture that this is your space to reclaim you know like you get to even redecorate if you want to as you breathe in stretch from your right heel which is rooting down into your right fingers which are reaching and let's keep the breath strong and smooth and slow And with your next exhale, root down to rise up. And on the inhale, spread your wings. And then exhale, turn your left foot to be parallel to your right. Bring your hands back together at your heart. Now turn the heels in and the toes out. Bring your hands down to your knees. And come down like a, we call this um, the jazz dance warm-up pose. But some people refer to this stance also as a part of goddess pose. So whatever you like, come down. I sometimes think of it like, I used to play sports and I, one time I tried to be an umpire at um, a baseball game. It was terrible. I hated to say the word strike, so I couldn't do it. I couldn't strike a kid out. <laughs> so I do sometimes think of this though as how they used to get down to see clearly, right? So come down into a position that feels powerful to you. And you can rock side to side, let the breath, and your body move together. Press out through both knees and down through both heels. As you go side to side, it might be different left to right, and you may have more range of motion in one direction or the other. The entire practice is really, it's not about judging or evaluating your body right now, but revitalizing from the inside. Let's come to the place that feels like center to you. And don't drop the hips lower than the knees. That won't be particularly helpful. As you press down into two straight arms, 
You want the spine to feel long, but it should feel like, like the hips are almost dangling down from the rib cage. Allow your belly to breathe. Now imagine that which is in front of you, rather than craving something like you really deeply know that what you want is assurance or stability or clarity. And you can breathe that in. And as you exhale to the left and the right, the past and the future go farther. They fade into the ethers. So you get to be responding to life from the present moment and from your deeper inner wisdom. And with your next inhale, press into both heels and rise up to standing. Bring your hands to your heart. Let's make the feet parallel. And then exhale, release. And we'll go heel toe, heel toe, heel toe to center. As you arrive here in the center, picture this surround that is yours to, to claim. So you say you can have the boundaries go out pretty far so you have a sense of space, permission, you're not being crowded by past thoughts, future worries, shame and criticism, craving and compulsion. You're not being crowded by those things right now. And picture yourself being able to recall this moment at any other time during your day. Not being crowded by past worries, future worries, shame or criticism, craving or compulsion. Okay, now, since we did have a physical yoga practice and this was a standing practice here, we're going to come down to the floor to have the resting and integration part. So I always like personally to have a blanket to cover with when I come down to Shavasana. So I'm going to recommend that for you. And the reason I do it is uh, sometimes I just cover up with my shawl. Right? So right now this is my blanket. But sometimes I do just cover up with something light because it may not be particularly chilly. And the reason for this is just this sense of like personal protection, really. It's a feeling of being cared for or cared about. And it's been meaningful to me in all the years of my recovery and my yoga practice. So meaningful that when I travel to India for more teachings and to be with my community there, <clears throat> I just take a shawl and it substitutes for so many things. <laughs> it's, um, and that shawl then has this feeling of meaning and memory to it very positive. Uh, so as you come to Shavasana, take your arms out to the side, or you could do your hands to your belly, your solar plexus, or perhaps to the heart. You can decide. And close your eyes and picture yourself having the freedom Freedom from past impressions, the past narratives or stories that you were told about yourself or that you now tell about yourself. And freedom from future apprehension or fear of the unknown. Imagine yourself as having the inner clarity and confidence to navigate what is to come. And imagine yourself being free from aversion, self-hatred or shame. and also free from craving and compulsion.
as you visualize this inner clarity or sovereignty, allow your body to very deeply relax and to create a memory, a memory of this time and the inner peace or assurance that you can cultivate. And please lightly wiggle your fingers and your toes. <laughs> that little wiggle is to notify your body that you're going to release from Shavasana. So take a slightly deeper breath in. And bend your knees. Roll to your side. Use both hands to come up to sitting. One of the beauties of using your shawl for Shavasana is that it's available for meditation. It's right there. You can rest your hands in your lap. Or maybe one hand or both hands to the heart. Feel inside the inner place that you can live from today and you can return to it if you get lost. You can come back to it. And acknowledging that, also acknowledge the effort you made in this practice. Please bring your hands to your heart. Thank you very much. Namaste.